Welcome to another episode of Jack Litter and Corner. I am Jackie, and it is Top 5 Wednesday time. Well, actually, technically it's not. I'm a little late with Top 5 Wednesday this week. It was yesterday, but, um, my friend was in town last week, and I was the one you saw in the previous Terry was in town, as you guys saw if you watched my other videos. So it kind of threw off my um, my schedule, and I got I actually got a show from Super Comment I showed on that video as well, and I wanted to watch that. So it, so I kind of like I said, it kind of threw my reading off a little bit. But um, I'm going to do Top Five Wednesday anyway because well I don't like missing Top Five Wednesdays. Um, this is in in case. You, um, don't know. Top 5 Wednesday is a Goodreads group created by Ginger Reads Laney and Sam from Thoughts on Tomes, currently hosted by Sam from Thoughts on Tomes. And it is a group where each month you have topics for each Wednesday of the week, and, um, you pick five of your favorites of that topic. And I will post a link to that, to the group, if you are interested in doing it. So this, yesterday's topic was your top five favorite rereads to that are top five books you want to revisit. Now as I was going through my shelf real quick to bring down, to bring the books that I would, I want to show you so that my video is not boring, um, I noticed there are quite a few books that I have started to already revisit but I decided not to share those because I feel like it wouldn't be fair for me to share the ones that I've already started revisiting. And I haven't. I don't know. Maybe maybe that's stupid of me to think, but like really like It by Stephen King, mm -hmm. Gone with the Wind. Although that one, I, that one I can count because yes, I read a couple pages, a few pages into the book, but then, um, My parents are on my trip all weekend. but then like. It was, it's because yeah, it's a classic funny. and it's historical, you know, sometimes I'm not in the mood for kind of those kind of books. And let's see, what was the other, there were a few other, um, oh, like, the Psychic Book of Deliverance Jane, um, there's, there's the books that I just read that I already want to reread at some point, but yeah, I have so many other books that I need to read and that I bought at the used bookstore so I've, in the last couple years. So I'm trying not, I'm trying to get through those books as well and not reread them. And, you know, there's books like Jane Eyre that I would like to revisit, but I no longer I'm have my possession because I gave it to my cousin. And I have been tempted to buy another copy, I'll but I never... But anyway, let's get to the topic, to the ones I did choose. Um... So, the first one I have here is I want to revisit The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern, which I believe so far is still the only book she's ever written. I mean, I guess if you, you know, if you were successful with the book and made a lot of money, you don't have to necessarily write another book, but I am sure a lot of people want her to rewrite another book. But this is a magic... Like, I, want, I think it's more magical realism than fantasy. It's about this mysterious circus that comes only at night. It just appears out of nowhere. And with this circus comes these magicians who are, they're, they're I guess, in a way, senseis. But, I mean, I know this is kind of your, more European, so they wouldn't use the term sensei. But um, their senseis have trained them to become magicians that will compete against each other at the in the cir with the circus as the excuse for them to battle it out. And of course, lo and behold, these two fall in love. The two competing magicians fall in love. And this is more this book is more like a like I feel like it's more of a character it's like a character study kind of book and it's it creates this beautiful amazing atmosphere um, I know some people aren't too keen on the like they wanted more of a competition with the two magicians and it kind of focused more on the romance but 
I enjoyed the writing style, and deep down, I do like romance in my books. And as I've said multiple times before, yes, I like it in the stories, I just don't like it being the main plot. Um, and it's just, it's, but it's more of just the beautifully written story, and it's, I feel like it's a bit of a character study, and you know, it just, it creates atmosphere, and you can almost smell the elements of the, you know, of the circus, like, the food that is at the circus, and you can see the colors and everything, it's so beautiful, and amazing, it's such an amazing, well-written story, and now, the one of the main reasons why I want to revisit this book is I read it so long ago, and I remember really loving it then, but sometimes I wonder if, you know, all the things I'm talking about, I really, I'm only, I, like, I only feel the way I do about it because, I mean, not that I didn't love, I mean, I do, I honestly do remember loving it, but I think I might be a little influenced by other people, my, like, my favorite booktubers who talk about this book, so I definitely want to revisit it, um, and by the way, I love, but I, like I said, I love this book, and I also love Caraval, and people compare it to Caraval, but some people, I think, they either... I think some people prefer one over the other sometimes. Like, some people prefer Caraval and some people prefer this one. Me, I like both of them. And I'm really sorry if you can hear background noise. I just was, I'm being lazy here and I don't want to pause when I'm watching. I'm watching Are You For The Dark. That was the, as you saw, if you watched my video about Supercon, that's the show I bought on DVD. And I've been watching it. And I wanted to watch some episodes before I went to work today. So, and I didn't want to go through the trouble of stopping it, so. Because then, um, you know, I wouldn't be able to watch much more. Okay, so, enough about that book. Okay, so next book I said is, that I want to revisit is A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. This is the only Dickens book that I've actually, like, I have physically read. Because, you know, I've seen the movie adaptations of his books, like, mostly in Christmas Carol. Actually, I think only A Christmas Carol. Um, but I really enjoyed this book. I mean, there were aspects of it that I didn't like. Like, I didn't like the main female character. She got on my nerves, and I was really mad. Because she felt so one-dimensional, and, and just a very weak character. And it bugged me that she automatically chooses the one guy, chooses to marry the one guy, while the other guy pays the price. The, like the guy who was in love with her. So, but anyway, this is basically takes place during the I think the French Revolution. It's about both England and France's perspectives. That's why it's two cities. And you have our main character is Sidney Carton, who happens to look exactly like this other gentleman. And he is in love with this girl, but she is going to marry the guy he looks like instead, so... And he's kind of the, this version of the bad boy type, you know, rebel, rebellious, trouble, and, you know, probably not someone that a good girl, a proper young lady, should marry. And it's about, and, like, it's, you know, and there's this mix-up between the two guys... Like, the guy that she's gonna marry gets arrested, but then Sydney, who happens to look like him, could take offers to take his place for it because he loves the girl. And the guy is still his friend. So, this is a classic, a classic Dickens book. And, of course, I know that Dickens is sometimes very hard to read and hard to get into. And I admit there were parts of the book that I had a hard time getting into, but I'm really enjoying it. And this is actually a book I read for um, my college literature class. Um, oh. oh, sorry. Um, this is one of my. This I love this episode, and it deals with two work, the two two of the reoccurring characters. But um, this is such, this one is great. I know that Charles, like I said, I know that Charles Dickens is hard to get into sometimes, and his writing can be very dry. But like I said, for me personally, I really enjoyed this book. And I definitely want to reread it to see if I still enjoy the book. Hello? 
Um, okay, so next, that was number two. Number Book number three is one I recently read last May. And that is The Secret History of Donna Tart. The problem with books this length for me is that I read them sporadically and don't finish them in one one go. I just, I start them and I read as much as I can and I get restless. I don't like using the B word um, when talking about books because I feel bad if I say, you know. Um, but I did really enjoy this book when I was reading it and I want to try to read it straight through. It's just, it's very hard. I feel like I have to do, take a little more time of reading books like this without stopping. Like, I read Daughter of the Forest and I was able to keep going with that one. And I tried to read Mistborn, but like like I said earlier, my friend came to town and we went to Supergon, so that kind of threw me off a little bit. Because of course you're not going to want to read when your friend is visiting, you know? And then we went to the convention last weekend, so it's like... So I had to stop at that one, but I am almost done with that one. But I definitely want to reread it, and maybe try to read it like straight through. The writing was great. I love stories about pompous, rich, arrogant people and them doing the, the stupid things that they do and, that, and getting into trouble. It's just, it's really fascinating and the conversations they have are really interesting. Like one of my favorite scenes, well actually I love this whole movie, but in Sound of Music there's a scene between the rich people that is, I don't know, I love how they speak. I don't know why. I just, I really like how, you know, the rich, snobby, pretentious people speak sometimes and listen to their conversations. I mean, also, it does depend on my mood, because sometimes it's just, I'm not in the mood for dealing with those kind of people. But, I, I enjoyed this book very much, and want to keep, and want to read it again. And I definitely recommend it. And, you know, I know people say this book is pretentious, but I feel like it's supposed to be, because you're dealing with a bunch of arrogant little pricks, a bunch of students who think themselves superior to everybody else, and that's the point. Like, that's what this book is about. And the dumb things those people do because they get too arrogant and too cocky. So, I think... And I do want to read her other book, The Goldfinch. I'll see about the end of this year. Um, let's see. Next book is... I want to reread The Gunslinger by... Stephen King. This was a book that I started many years ago. I started reading this because it's the first book in the series, and I started rereading the reading the series many many years ago. Um, and I'm currently on book number four, but because it's been so long, and I don't remember a lot of stuff in the book. I mean, I know people like one of my booktubers I watched said in my comments, he said you don't have to reread the books. Because you know, you're at the book, reading the next book will refresh your memory. And the fourth book is one in the series you don't necessarily have to read because it's really our main character, Roland, telling his his group of friends that are following him, going with him on this quest, a story. So it's not part of the main arc. So you technically don't have to like read it, but I am going to read it as soon at some point but first like I said I really feel like I should go back and reread the first three books and again this is another book that I feel like I need to read you know just read it straight through without stopping but the problem is it's you know it's also a bit gritty and a western fantasy type book and it's easier for me to read like European fantasy or it's even easier for me to read YA fantasy because why fantasy you can get that quickly because they keep in mind that most of their audience are teenagers who won't necessarily be able to read this kind of book and stick with it. Like me. I mean, it could be wrong for me to, for people to assume that, but, um, anyway, so, that's another book that I want to reread. And then, oh, my dog is stretching. I don't know if you guys can see it. <laughs> oh, you, oh, dang it, you missed it. It's so cute. She was like stretching out her leg, her paws, and everything. It was really cute. Oh. Let's see if you can. You see it? Or, no. 
pro I'm probably wasting, you know, like moving the camera and trying to shake. Um. Okay, so. The next one is basically I said any book that I've already read by this author is a book I want to revisit. And she does have another book coming out, or it might have already come out. Um, and that is anything by Kate Morton that I've read so far. Because I think I am up to date on her books. And she has another book coming out. Or, it, like I said, it is out called The Clockmaker's Daughter. I just love her writing style and her stories. I'm Historical fiction is my, not, my other favorite genre. Next to the fantasy. And then I'm, you know, horror is the third favorite. Although, I feel like, can I really say that when I haven't read enough horror? I feel like I can't really fairly say that. But I guess I'm thinking that way because of the, um, you know, movies I've, and shows I've watched that are horror related. I really enjoyed those. But anyway, the one, but in all honesty, probably the one I won't, I most want to read other than The Forgotten Garden is The Secret Keeper. It was my second favorite. The Forgotten Garden was, at least currently I say it's my first favorite, but a booktuber I like, um, I think her first name's April, from Getting Hugga With, Getting Hugga With It. She had pointed out some things when she read, um, The Forgotten Garden for the first time. And that, so, it makes me, you know, it makes me want to reread it, revisit it, and revisit this one to see maybe it might change, and that one might not be my favorite, and this one might be my favorite. But then again, maybe it's just, then, um, but then maybe, maybe not, maybe I don't agree with April. But I want to I want to reread the first this one for, revisit this one first and then I want to revisit I want to revisit this one and I want to revisit the Forgotten Garden but first I'm going to re re revisit this one okay so those are my top five books that I want to revisit I want to um revisit. Again, I apologize, it's so late, but like I said, they kind of got a little thrown off. Um, so, if, what are books you would like to revisit? Or even, oh, actually, I get a bonus thing. I would love a TV show I want to revisit soon is, is Grimm, which that got canceled. That's a show, because Sam did say you can pick any, not just books, but you can pick shows and movies too. But I want to, um, but yeah, that's kind of a bonus one. I want to revisit the show Grimm and re-watch it the rest of the way through. Although the way it ends, I felt like, the, and probably because they got, they got, they were aware ahead of time that they were canceled. They were more prepared, I don't know, but, um, I feel like the end, it was a good ending to the show, or a decent ending, like, it didn't end on a cliffhanger, like some shows do. But, anyway, so, what are books that you want to revisit, or even a TV show or a movie you want to revisit, that you haven't watched in years? If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, and click subscribe if you haven't already. I hope you guys are enjoying your reading, and I will talk to you during the next episode that I make. Alright, bye!